رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى What is the best answer to someone who asks why do Muslims fast? Is it just to feed, uh, to feel how the poor and miskeen means uh, the needy, feel without food? Is there a deeper meaning behind it? See, Muslims' actions stem from the Quran and the Sunnah. It does not come from logic because people's logic differ. What you see logical, I may see illogical. So it is not appropriate, it is not acceptable for each and every one of us to shoot from the hip and come up with a new religion, with new beliefs, or with something that we justify and believe it is the right thing to do. Then why do Muslims fast? Muslims fast. Muslims pray, Muslims feed the poor, Muslims are kind to their parents, Muslims connect to their kinship, Muslims do all these things as part of their religion because they worship Allah Azza wa Jal, who says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and the human beings except to worship me. So whatever we do, it has to be, it has to fall under the category of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal if we were to fulfill the purpose of our creation. So why do we fast? Answer is simple. It's a form of worship. Allah tells us to fast, we fast. And the funny thing is that People, out of their good will, they would come up with justifications. Now, some of them are valid, yet we do not have the guts to confirm that this is why Allah Azza wa Jal obligated us to fast. So it, we accept them as an idea, as a thought, but we do not relate it to Islam. And the notion, the idea of justifying things in Islam is good and bad. It's good because it increases my iman. It increases my belief. So when Allah tells me don't eat pork, I refrain from eating pork. But these pork chops look delicious. Yet I believe when a doctor comes and tells me, listen, pork chops have the following illnesses, heart disease, high blood pressure. It has a special worm that uh, infests your intestines and blah, blah, blah. Then I believe and I'm convinced. So this is good. It adds value. However, it has a bad side to it. See, not everything in Islam, Allah comes and tells us, this is the reason, this is the wisdom, this is the justification. Otherwise, I would be speaking to one of my peers, pray. Why should I pray? Because I told you so. Everything you tell me I do, A'udhu Billah. I'm a Muslim. Part of my Islam is to submit my will. Allah tells me to throw myself from the window. I throw myself from the window. I'm a Muslim. Allah doesn't do this. But if Allah were to do this, I would say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and adhere and we obey. So the bad side of this is that shaitan opens the doors for you to go astray by justification. So he tells you, why do we pray? You say, because you have to have your heart energized and five times a day you're connected to Allah. Good answer. 
Why do we fast? Because we have to feel like the impoverished people, the poor people, the, uh, those who are ne in need, so we can give from our money and wealth to contribute to them and at the same time to see the blessings of Allah upon us and at the same time because this and that good justification. Why do we give zakat? We have to give 2.5% of our savings so that the whole community would feel at ease and we won't have any big differences of layers between the rich and the poor and no enmity. No. Excellent answer. So he keeps on opening these door by door. Why is it prohibited to consume uh, intoxicants? It wastes your mind. It makes you do things that you regret. Good. Then he opens something that you cannot find the justification for. And this would cause you either to doubt Islam or to maybe reject it altogether. So he says, why is gold haram? for men to wear. You say because it's expensive and it, it breaks the hearts of the poor. You say, but diamonds are halal for men and they are 10 times more expensive than gold. This, this doesn't make sense. Here, you say, hmm, it doesn't make sense. And this means that you've opened the Pandora box upon yourself and you're close to going into hell. Someone comes to you and say, Tell me about Islam. You say, pray. We, says, yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean by pray? So we pray five times a day. A day. MashaAllah, we go to church only once a, 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 um, a week. Um, how do you pray? So we perform wudu, ablution. We wash our limbs five times a day, multiplied by three times every wash. So you wash your feet 15 times a day? I said, yes, I'm a proud Muslim. I wash my feet 15 times a day, minimum. He said, I wash my face only once in the morning. Your feet are more clean than my face. What a beautiful religion you have. Yes, and I'm proud of my religion. I'm a Muslim. He says, if you don't have water, what do you do? I say, I just put my hands on the soil and I dust my face and hands. Excuse me? Why would you do that? Your religion is a religion of cleanliness. You are washing your limbs 15 times a day. If you don't have water, the normal thing to do is just not to do anything. Why soil your face with dust? Then you start to say, hmm, I never thought of that. It doesn't make sense. Let me reschedule. A'udhu Billah. Where is your submission? See, this is how shaitan works. So, to make a long story short, this is not our topic, but it is important for, for you to set your compass. It is important to put the coordinates in your Google search or Google map or Google whatever, so that you know where you will end, which is destination Jannah. And inshallah, you will hear that sound saying, you have reached your destination. But if you start to logic things, why do women cover and men don't? We have handsome men that make the heads of women turn. They should cover. Astaghfirullah wa atubu Now you're questioning Allah's religion? You're questioning Allah? You have a problem. So coming back to the question, why do Muslim fast? Simple. Allah told us to fast. Now, are there any... Other benefits, of course, health benefits. I'm diabetic. And all doctors, even non-Muslims, say if you fast, this reduces your diabetes drastically and helps cure it. Those who fast help their heart problems. They help their weight by reducing their obesity. They save money. They feel how the poor feel. So they have this empathy towards them and they would like to help them whenever they can. So it also gives you power over yourself. And why is that? When I fast from halal things, from drinking water, from eating apples, which is halal, 
how would I be when it comes to haram? Definitely, I would be much more empowered. Because if Allah Azza wa Jal cured my addiction to what he made halal, would I be any close being addicted to haram, such as watching porn, listening to music, fornicating, consuming intoxicants, engaging in idle talk, backbiting, gossiping, slandering, etc.? Definitely not. So there are so many benefits of fasting, but again, this is something that we shoot from the hip. Is it mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah? No, it doesn't have to be mentioned. But we believe that Allah ordered us to fast, and this is why we fast. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the ayah of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number two. Allah Azza wa Jal says, O oh, you who believe, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. That you may become righteous in Arabic is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you might reach the level of taqwa. So what is taqwa? Because if you recite the Quran, you will find it filled with this expression, taqwa, fattaquh, al-muttaqeen, la'allahum yattaqoon. All of this comes from the word taqwa. So what, what is taqwa? This is a terminology that is stemmed from protection, wiqaya. So even if you go down the road, you'll find that there are shops that would sell you films that provide you with wiqaya, with protection from the infrareds, from the ultraviolets, from the sun rays, from the heat. So taqwa is protection. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that all of you know by heart, ittaqunnar walaw bishiqqi tamra. Ittaqunnar, leave a visor, leave a barrier, leave a protection between you and hellfire, even with half a date. Meaning that if I take the half a date, I would not put it in my face as a shield and enter hell, a'udhu billah. It means that if you give in charity, this half a date, even it's so negligible, it will become as a barrier between you and hellfire. So, ittaqunnar, the Prophet is telling us, والسلام, to keep a protection, a barrier between us and hellfire. So, when Allah orders us to fast and tells us that this will help you elevate to the level of taqwa, so that you would befit the description of al-muttaqeen, this is a very high level. And this was mentioned in other hadiths when the Prophet said, alayhi salatu he said, as jannah And in another hadith, he said, as jannatun min al-nar. Jannah is a protection. And he's telling us that fasting is a protection, is a barrier between you and hellfire. So now, this adds up now. Fasting saves us from hellfire. Not only that, there are eight gates to paradise. Each one has a name. So this one is for Salat, this one is for Jihad, this one is for those who fast. And it's called Ar-Rayyan. So whenever you hear someone's son named Ar-Rayyan or Rayyan, you understand that this is the name of the gate of Jannah, that only those who fast enter from it. So fasting elevates your and boosts your Iman. And Ibn Rajab says that Taqwa is to leave 
whatever drives you to hellfire from committing sins or from abandoning forms of worship that you are obligated to do. So you're actually, to fit the description of taqwa, you are staying away from haram and you're doing everything that Allah has mandated upon you. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, says, the description of taqwa Allah, fearing Allah, this collects under it everything that Allah has ordered us to do, whether it is mandatory or highly recommended. And also everything that Allah had prohibited us from doing, whether totally haram or not recommended. And this includes Allah's rights, and it also includes the rights of the humans among themselves. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who they say is the fifth caliph, used to say that taqwa is not fasting all day long and praying all night long and fooling around in between. No, this is not taqwa. Taqwa is to abandon what Allah Azza wa Jal had prohibited and to do what Allah Azza wa Jal has obligated upon you. So, so whomever has been given such a blessing and a favor, then after that, he is from goodness to goodness until he reaches the day of judgment. So this is the true concept of taqwa. Scholars say, pray in the last row of the masjid, but do not commit sin, is much better than praying in the first row while you slander people, backbite them, you harm them, you do sins from all types and categories. So again, taqwa is to keep something between you and hellfire, and this is done by avoiding sins and by doing what Allah has mandated upon you. <laughs>